most important issue facing our country at any given time is national security and the security of our people. If we can't protect our people from what others have in mind for us and what others are planning as we speak against us, nothing else matters. Our economy doesn't matter, the social issues that we uh, care about do not matter because all will be lost if we don't fulfill that number one obligation uh, of any government, and especially a free and democratic society, who's been a beacon for freedom all over the world. That's why we're the number one target. We face enemies and threats that we've never faced before. You know, back some years ago, many of you uh, lived through it uh, as adults, uh, we had the Soviet Union and the one big threat but the one big kind of weapon uh, that they could use against us. It was an era of mutual assured destruction. We thought you can't get any worse than that. So we don't have that now anymore. But in its place now is a multiplicity of threats from terrorist groups led by Al-Qaeda, from rogue nations in various stages of developing nuclear capability, from North Korea to Iran, uh, to others. Syria apparently had started. They got, they got bombed the other day by the Israelis. Nobody's saying much about it, but that's exactly what was going on uh, over there. Uh, we don't know to what extent they're collaborating with each other. We know that there's weaponry available now in the world that we didn't know about uh, not very long ago, that they're trying to get and trying to use uh, against us. Some of the weaponry, of course, has been around for a while, but the delivery of it's been very difficult. But nowadays, we could be under attack from a biological attack and not even know it for a long time. So that's the world that we live in while we go about and argue among ourselves. And Congress is always fighting about something one way or another. Trying, everybody trying to take political advantage, you know, looking toward the next election instead of the next generation. While all that's going on, this is underlying uh, everything else. And now, we face a situation that we have to come to terms with. And that is that we're not doing all that we need to do to protect ourselves. Now, I think what's going on in Iraq right now is showing a lot of promise. The press doesn't want to quite acknowledge it yet. I noticed the big story back not too long ago about us uh, really prevailing and taking over areas in Mesopotamia there the way we've done in Anbar province and other areas down there and other Sunnis coming uh, to join uh, our side. Uh, Iran is even backing off somewhat. Page A19, page 19 in the New York Times. If there had been any bad news to report that day, what page do you think that would have been on? But we have to come to terms with the fact that we do not have enough people, we do not have enough soldiers or Marines, we are stretched too thin and we've got equipment that's worn out. And we've got to do better than that as a nation. We have to reprioritize what's in this country's interest. Uh, we have an intelligence system that didn't tell us what was going on down there. Didn't tell us what we were going to be facing when we got uh, down there. We've got a lot of things that we've got to do better than what we have done uh, in the past. That's why in a, a speech at the Citadel I gave recently, I outlined exactly what I thought we ought to do. We've been getting by and trying to get by on the cheap in this country. Nobody likes to talk about it because everybody's got their own priorities and every congressman's got his own spending bill and his own earmarks and the bacon they want to bring home and so forth. But the fact of the matter is we historically have been about 5% of our economy in expenditures for a military. We're now at 4 or 4.1 <coughs> and they're projecting it'll go down even further. We can't do that. We can't do that. We need a million person ground force. I was talking about increasing the number of, 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 of the Army and also Marines. Uh, we need aircraft that's not twice as old as the people who are, are flying the, the aircraft. We need a, a, a Navy that can protect our interests and protect our people uh, around the world. We've still got traditional kinds of, of enemies out there that may develop. We hope they don't. We don't want to make enemies out of anybody who's not. But you've got to be realistic in the world we live in because we're perceived to be kind of weak right now. We're perceived to be kind of weak and divided. That makes us vulnerable. We're going to have to make sure that the world understands, both enemy and friend alike, 
that we're committed and united enough to do things that's going to protect our country uh, in the future.